Good morning, my name is Ron Morris. This is Moving Forward TV, your local real estate and mortgage update. And I'm Delyn Gaston, thanks for watching today. Today's show is about creative financing. Ron, is there any such thing as creative financing anymore? Depends, your definition and my definition might be different. Bottom line is yes, there is creative financing as long as you're working with a creative thinking lender. That's the big key. Right. As long as you're working with a lender who knows how to look at things. A few years ago, we used to get a lot of questions about creative financing when they couldn't verify their, their jobs, <laughs> their income, their, their, income, assets, their at, all that nothing. stuff. Nothing. Right, they couldn't right. verify anything, and those were called no-doc mm. loans. Well, in today's world, we have to verify everything. There's no such thing. But if you're working with a creative thinking loan officer, we can look at someone's entire financial picture and extract what we need out right. of that to make the deal work. That's creative thinking. And we thought we'd tell you some of the ways that Dylan and I have been creative over the last few files that we've worked on. Mm -hmm. And I, I think nothing speaks better yes. than real life stories. Okay, here's a great example of being creative. I was pre-qualifying a couple as a husband and wife looking to buy a home. From the time that I pre-qualified them a number of months ago till the time they made an offer, they purchased a car. Well, here's a hiccup. <laughs> it's a big hiccup, Here's actually. a problem. Now, I was doing the loan in just the wife's name, not the husband's, because of some credit issues, which was fine. They could qualify from a debt-to-income ratio and a credit standpoint until they bought a car. So when they sat down small at my... Small problem. Yeah, just a small problem. When they sat down at my desk, we're going over everything. Of course, I'm repulling credit. And again, it was a number of months since I had started with them. Lo and behold, I think it was a little over $500 a month car payment. Surprise, which, surprise. Which, you know, totally killed the deal. So we were able to put our heads together. What we were able to accomplish is we were able to have the wife remove the car payment from her name and put it solely in the husband's name. And I have to give them credit because they, kind of, because they shouldn't have done it to begin with, but they did. But they were able to contact, it was a local credit union who did the car loan, and they were able to remove that car payment from the wife, put it into the husband's name alone, which I wasn't doing the loan in the husband's name. Lo and behold, we were able to qualify them. They're now happy homeowners. And that did take some creativity there, being able to shuffle some debts around. Unfortunately, it worked out for everybody. Okay, another example of creative thinking. I had somebody who had called me, and actually they had spoken to two other lenders before who no. me who said no. They have no job, they are retired, they have no job, <laughs> they have no pension, and they have not started drawing Social Security yet. You might think and yet that's other lenders a, said no. You might think that's a problem. <laughs> Outside of the box thinking, this person has investment uh, accounts. They have um, some accounts that have enough money in it that we can work together with his financial planner to set out a certain amount of money each month that the, that the financial planner will set up as a distribution to him, which would be more than enough to qualify him for buying the house. So these are 401s, IRAs, that kind of investment? Exactly. Okay. Again, outside of the box thinking, and after two other lenders said no, two banks, I might add, is putting this person into a house. Okay, another great example, and probably the most common example of creative financing yes. are complicated tax returns. Typically, if you see somebody that's self employed mm -hmm. or maybe owns multiple properties, mm -hmm. the tax returns can tend to be much more complicated than what most of us are used to looking at. You need to be working with a loan officer that has the capability of understanding those tax returns, mm -hmm. withdrawing the paper write-offs, depreciation, right. and some other things there, so we can qualify or see if we can qualify that buyer. Absolutely. I'm actually working with uh, two gentlemen right now, two single guys. They own properties individually. They own properties together in a corporation. So there's K-1 income. There's a ton of rental income, again, 16 properties, and we're trying to go through that right now to decipher. Their tax returns are th like They this really big. are. They're, I'm spread out all over my desk. It's a little disgusting, but uh, actually it's very challenging. I enjoy yes. doing that to see where what we can do. Matter of fact, this client was referred to me by a local bank because they could not do the loan. So we're going through it now to see if we can. Again, being more creative to see if we could help these people. You know, and that brings up a really good point, Ron, about the uh, number new of properties world, owned, right? numerous properties, multiple properties. Most banks, most lenders out there, if somebody is an investor, and there's a lot of them out there right now, and they have more than four properties that are financed, most lenders are going to say, no, they can't do Correct. it. Yeah. That's Fannie and Freddie's we, rule. Basically, right. it's four. You may have a couple that go five. It's traditionally four properties. You own more than that. Right. You're not getting a Fannie Mae loan. Our company can do up to 10. Right. So if you have somebody over four, under 10, give yeah, us so a So if buzz. you're working with investors out there and they own more than four properties, 
everybody's saying no to them, keep us in mind. Again, that's what we're here for. We'd like to be able to help your clients get into those homes, be it an owner-occupied property or an investment property. Right. If you have clients out there that are in need of some creative thinking, by all means, give us a call. Call us, email, email us, us, get whatever. in touch with us. We want to get your clients into a home. That's our show. We appreciate you watching. But before we run, we did want to mention real quick, we've been getting some calls lately about short sale, time frame processing. I know you guys those have are still been... still going on? Yeah. Imagine that. Short sale still going on. <laughs> Moving them along a little bit quicker, we've also been getting some calls about loan, loan modifications, modifications to people who are trying to stay in their homes and hang on to them. So we've contacted attorney Gary Lyons from McFarland Gold, and he's going to be on the show sometime in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned to talk about that kind of stuff. For more information from Gary, click on the banner McFarland Gold over here. Keep in mind Danny at Pillar to Post is there, and of course Jason at Commonwealth Insurance. Real quick note on Jason, there's been a lot of media coverage about sinkhole coverage, mm -hmm. and with citizens talk about increasing their premiums up to 400%. Again, imagine that. If you have questions about that or find out what other options you might have, see Jason at Commonwealth. He's yeah. very experienced, very good at what he does. Uh, by all means, keep him in mind for your insurance uh, needs. Right. And remember, if you're watching the show for the first time, please subscribe <laughs> for free. Also, uh, share the show. Pass it out to your buyers or sellers or whatever if this can help anybody out there. Blog, yeah, don't, tweet don't us, Facebook. Social network thing, exactly. Right. <laughs> YouTube, we're on all of those. So we appreciate your watching. Forward the show. And until next week, we are... Moving forward. We'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye. There, can you tell anything about me from this? Yeah, you got a round shape and you're full of hot air. <laughs>